this YouTube thing up real quick. We'll get started. How's everybody doing? It is, uh, <clears throat> All right, there we go. All right, perfect. Let's. Bam. There we go. All right. How is everybody? Happy Tuesday. Happy, uh, I guess, Wednesday for some of you guys, right? Crypto's making you want to go. I'll tell you what, man. <laughs> I will tell you what. So I did a, uh, I had a. Uh, I've been diving into crypto lately, right? I haven't, I've, told, I've talked about this. I haven't margin traded crypto in a minute. Uh, actually, I haven't margin traded crypto all year. Uh, my KOT Forex account is my broker that I use. And uh, I, I just looked at it. I was like, I haven't touched it since December. Um, but I definitely have been stacking up on some stuff. And uh, I had a, I did a Zoom call with some, uh, some people that I, I've been doing some crypto stuff on Saturday with, and I talked about this Karua coin, the uh, Karua um, project that was on the uh, Kusama network. And I just got, I saw on Reddit, uh, they won the bid, they, uh, the auction, the first auction for it, uh, which I'll tell you what, I'm pretty excited because uh, I mean, it's, it's got some really nice potential. So, <clears throat> but yeah, we'll, we'll dive into it. Let's, uh, let's start the stream. All right, guys. Uh, where is it? Let's do this bad boy right there. All right. Let's log in. All right. Boom. Make sure this is up. What is good? What is good? But yeah, crypto is definitely on some, on some good sales. Um, I'll tell you, I'm not really looking to capitalize on any of the high caps. Well, I take it back. No, no. I, I do have a nice buy limit set on uh, Ethereum. So if Ethereum gets to 1500, uh, I, I'm definitely adding some more positions. Um, all right, here we go. Where do you find the Zoom link? Uh, here, hold on, I'll tell you what. Let's see. Where is, there we go. There we go. All right, maybe these guys here on YouTube can jump on then if it doesn't match out, max out. All right, so sorry guys. Like I said, I was finishing a little little dinner, Taco Tuesday here in the house. Um, <clears throat> so let's dive into it. Um, yes, last week was, uh, long story short, uh, I had some engagements to take care of at the end of the week, uh, meet up with some really good old battle buddies, war buddies of mine and, uh, I really wasn't trading a lot towards the end of the week, which is my big my big time to take some entries. Um, I did I did manage three positions last week. One of them was a stop loss on Shift JPY. Uh, the other two was an odd CAD buy. I think the other might have been like a GJ buy or something like that. Both both hit break even, but I took some partials out of it, so I was pretty happy with it. Um, but yeah, let's uh, let's dive into it. I kind of go over what I'm looking at, kind of give you guys some uh, some insight into my head. Um, <clears throat> while this is loading, I'm definitely looking at yen crosses. Uh, so we'll start with that. I'm looking at f four yen crosses in particular, right? Um, so kind of just to give you my, my idea why I'm looking at yen crosses. So if we look at the, at the yen futures, right? Um, let's just pound, get up here to a four hour. <clears throat> so I know there's a lot of, a lot of, junk going on in here, right? But the, the key for me is this. Um, from an intraday perspective, we're bearish, right? From an intraday, we're bearish. Uh, last week's price action, this is all last week's price action right here, all right? It didn't even break the high, okay? Um, all right, so you can see I had an alert up here that says crossing the break of structure for us to break up to the upside. And I had one down here for crossing downside breaker structure. So I'm, I'm pretty convinced that we are going to trade lower. Uh, you can see we're almost making a new low here. So just walking this down in a leg perspective, I mean, it's a really nice just um, downward trending market on, on the yen futures. So if I'm, if I'm continuing to see some weakness in the yen, that means that everything JPY should go bullish. Right. That's what I'm looking at. And that's kind of what I'm looking at is buys. 
All right. Um, that's yeah, that's that's something I'm definitely, definitely looking at. The um the the ones I'm really focusing it on are obviously Chef JPY, EJ, GJ, and then NJ. Right. I'm not looking at any of the others, and I'll kind of tell you why um, you know, when we go through it. But Chef JPY, um, you know, listen, Chef JPY, I've been hammering. I'm still holding this one position from down here. All right. I've taken all the partials I'm gonna take. Um Personally, I wanted to see Chef JPY get lower. I wanted us to come in here or come in here, right? These are the two areas that I was really looking at, and we, we didn't get that low, um, which kind of sucks because I, I really wanted it to get into that area. Um, from an intraday perspective, though, you can kind of see what, what Chef JPY has done here. We've, come on, get down to the 15. There we go. So <clears throat> we've definitely broken some order flow, right? Uh, this right here was just a break of order flow and hold on is that all right blue's a little better well I'll, I'll do blue so we broke order flow here i was kind of really hoping that we would come back and test this push down which we haven't um potentially something we'll do later on um but at this point we have a reaccumulation right we had an attempted distribution that really didn't dis distribute out of anything um and then on the break above and jump of the creek, we had a reaccumulation. So where I'm really going to be focusing in on on Chef JPY is going to be out of two areas, right? So when we come here and look at this distribution, the key is um, where's the break, right? So this was this is the high that broke. This right here is our reaccumulation, okay, uh, which ultimately is going to be our slingshot. Right. So this is the slingshot that I want to see either an accumulation out of to take higher or what I want to see is I want to find this area right here. OK, so this. OK, this push down is going to be our shakeout. So ultimately, what I want to see is I want to see price come on down, give us an accumulation here to go higher, or I wanna see us come into this candle here and do the same, give me an accumulation. I'm not setting any limits on it. Um, one, uh, because the price action, it wasn't as good as like G GJ was. <clears throat> GJ, I do have a limit on, um, you know, but ultimately I, I, wanna, I wanna just see us if we can get into this area here. So that, that's ultimately what I'm gonna be looking for, London into like New York session, all right? Um, I'm guessing, let's see, maybe like a 20 minute. No, it's gonna be like a 40 minute. 40 minute, let's just see, 38. I mean, heck, uh, let's see. Ooh, that's 60 minute, let's go 120. 19. All right, if I can't find it real quick, we'll uh, we'll move on. <clears throat> I'll, I'll kind of screw around with it later on to see if I could find it. No, I was kind of close with it. One one five. What's your what's your go to time frame? My go to time frame? What do you mean, like my go to time frame? <laughs> Um, I, I got three time frames. I've got a, um, I've got a higher time frame. I got an intraday, and I got a lower time frame. That's about it. So I kind of like this one twelve. This one twelve kind of would be something I'd be looking at right in here. This, let's see, right here at the eighty percent. I'm just curious what is sitting in there. <clears throat> Yeah, I mean we're pretty. That pretty much is the drop. That one, one, two, that one, one, two. I go through every single one. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Um, so I've I've found entries. I think the the lowest entry I ever took was that US thirty one second one. Um, and then I think the biggest one I've taken so far was like something like in the nine hundred, like a nine hundred something minute. Um, yeah. So what I say one one two right one one two minute. So anyway, yeah, th this is pretty much what I'm going to be looking for. So out of Chef JPY, you know, I want to get an accumulation in here, right? Or I want to get an accumulation right around here. So I've got my alert set. Hold on. 
let me change it no longer crossing bos look for buys right so this is what i'm going to look for for london session all right um targets are still going to be uh, i'm still bullish on this right i mean this this was just the pullback into the intraday uh can you give a quick summary on a reaccumulation and redistro what what do you mean by summary like what do you need why do I use the 80%? Uh, that's an easy answer. I have a bookshelf full of charts that I've back tested and traded and demo traded and paper traded. And uh, the 80% is what I found gave me some really nice, some really, really nice entries. Um, it's the one cotton set I, I find I'm struggling with. Um, all right. So before you can have a reaccumulation, you have to have a distribution. If you don't have a distribution going into your reaccumulation, uh, then you don't have a reaccumulation. You need to have that distro. Um, and um, just keep in mind where you are in the market cycle. So, I mean, not, not going too crazy, but you know, market cycles do this, right? So accumulation, reaccumulation, distribution, redistribution, accumulation, reaccumulation, and so forth. So if you're coming out of an accumulation and you start to see a distribution, you know, kind of ask yourself why. And if you're adamant about being bullish, then wait for the confirmation of a reaccumulation. So for me, there's two things I need for a reaccumulation. I need a new high, right? I need a new high or a break of structure, right? Depending if that distribution actually worked. Uh, and then I need to jump across the creek. These two things confirm the reaccumulation for me. And then vice versa on the distribution. <clears throat> so in order to have a distribution redistribution, you need to have a essentially a failed accumulation. All right. Um, what's the intraday higher low? Where is the unchep JPY? Yeah, yeah. So <clears throat> right here. This this hold on. Uh this is what's maintaining our intraday. All right. So we ultimately, this is the higher time frame reaccumulation, but this right here is our intraday and this was our pullback. That's why I kind of wanted to see that. That's ultimately why I wanted to see us coming to the extreme. I would have loved to have taken this entry right here, 80% of the two hour and the 30 minute. I would have loved for it to come that low, but we didn't get it. Um, how do you see the difference between accumulation and re how do you see the difference? Because the, the redistro happens after the accumulation fails. That's why. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. For me. Yeah. I would, I would need to see us break intraday because we're, we're bullish, you know, like look at that, look at this higher time frame. I mean, we're, I'll tell you right now, higher time frame. we're bullish from here. This is, this is the low on the higher time frame that needs to be broken. You know, and if you think about it from this perspective, right, we know that this reaccumulation is a continuation move. So low continuation, we would need a distribution for the market cycle. So I think that's something that a lot of people have been really, um, that's helped them a lot is understanding, ask yourself where you are in the market cycle for structure. All right. If, you, if you've completed the cycle, you've had a valid pullback. Right until price gives a proper distribution, whether it's a one-minute distro, a four-hour distro, whatever it is, price needs to distribute. If you're bullish, price needs to distribute to get to get a valid pullback. Okay, um, so yeah. Anyway, go, going back to Chef JPY, yeah, th this is what I'm looking at short term right here. Right, this is going to be my my first area that I'm going to be looking at. All right, because I've got I've got to follow. Even though I hate order flow, I've got to follow order flow on this, because we won't break structure on the lower time frame until we go, take up that high up there. All right, so this is this is pretty simple. You know, we've got the reaccumulation. Here's my slingshot right right in here. Hold on, this is my slingshot area. So for me, I need to require I require a schematic in the slingshot area, and then this push down right here, this last shakeout. Uh, that's essentially what this is. This is the shakeout. So out of the distribution, it's the MSAL. Oh, geez, hold on. I was screwing around with Zach and I threw in a BTC thing. So I had this thing all the way up here. Uh, what was it, 12 maybe? 12, yeah. All right, so this is the shakeout. All right, so out of the shakeout is when I want to see mitigation. Um, do you implement supply and demand? 
zones into your schematics. Uh, yeah, man, absolutely. Here's my here's my three keys, bro. Here's my three keys right here. Hold on, where are they at? Bam, that's it. Structure, supply and demand, cause and effect. That's that's the secret to Wyckoff. And then 457 is order flow. <laughs> the process of make marking up either. Can I go through the process of marking up either an accumulation or a distro? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. If, if we come across them, yeah, I'm, I'll mark it out. Just keep in mind, not every schematic requires a preliminary support or a preliminary supply. Okay. Um, yeah. Yeah. Cool. Cool. All right. Why do you, why do I hate order flow? <laughs> Cause my journal tells me to hate order flow. That's why my journal tells me. So if, if, uh, for those that love order flow can, you know, listen, if you can make it work, you can make it work. I, I could tell you this, that order flow, order flow to me is like, if you live by the beach or the ocean order flow is like the sand at the beach, right? Sand right at the waterline, the shoreline, it changes with the tides. You know, order flow can change on a dime where structure will be maintained. So for me, structure is key. Structure is everything, all right? Structure dictates how and when I reduce my risk, how and when I break even, how and when I take partials and profits, how and when I take my entries. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So anyhow, uh, Chef JPY, pretty simple, right? I mean, it's just, I'm going to play out of the reaccumulation um, and we'll go from there. All right. Uh, one of the key things like, and I've been talking about it, right? I know a lot of people ask me, why do I hate Asian sessions so bad? So um, I created just this little thing real quick. I mean, you can use the sessions one. I just do this one because it's a little easier. So the yellow, yellow, right? Yellow is Asian session. So this was Asian session, uh, session yesterday. So you can see we have our distribution starting out here. And here comes the London crossover. And what do we do? We sweep the Asian low and then we sweep the Asian high. So um, Chef JPY and GJ were actually pretty, pretty nice in doing that. Um, there wasn't, there, I, oh shoot, I haven't even looked down in here on Chef JPY, but I know there was a one minute entry on, uh, on GJ. Was there one down here? Uh, no, no, there wasn't. GJ was definitely cleaner. Yeah, GJ was definitely cleaner. Uh, show them the meme. Or <laughs> Hold on, look. Let me pull it up. <laughs> ah, that's right, bro. Sango, you got the meme going. Hold on, hold on. Let me see. Let me see. Hey, send it to me. Send it to me real quick because I think, uh, hold on, I'll search for it, but I think I have to search for it. Because I said, I, told, I said I was going to, I was going to save it, but I forgot to save the darn thing, bro. Hold on. Uh, let's see. Here we go. Wait. Here we go. Let's see. Let's see. Oh, there you go. You sent it to me. Hold on. You did. All right. Boom. I got it. All right. Here we go. Here we go. Yeah. There. <laughs> here you go. This is courtesy of Sango, right there. <laughs> that's that's what I think of Asian price action. <laughs> That's, uh, that's, that's, that's right there. I love it. That is, uh, that is by far here. Hold on. Let me save it. Save this bad boy where I want it. Hold on. <laughs> uh, where do you find your session breaks on trading view? It's, it's a, uh, a, whatchamacallit, a, uh, just an indicator. I use, if you type in under indicator sessions on chart, um, that's, that's what I use. So, yeah. Yeah, dude, I love it. I love it. But anyway, so you could see why and where uh, this is This is honestly what I was looking for. You have the distribution going on, right? So off the lower time frame, here's your distribution, right? Here's our trading range. We got plenty of, uh, you know, plenty of reason to see the distribution. This was the test of the UTAD. And then we had this shoot down, right? Uh, the key was this what did this distribution accomplish? Absolutely nothing, you know? Um, and then price kind of fell apart in here. This is the Asian low. This is the Asian high, you know, in here swept the Asian high. So it was right after London session already swept the high. And then we came in and swept the low. So ultimately 
this right here, uh, distribution, one leg, two leg, right? You always, I always talk about three, three drives up, two drives down. Well, here's your distribution, your one drive, your two drive. And what I was waiting for was this, this, this break right here. So coming out of that break, pretty simple. Here's your reaccumulation, your slingshot that causes the break. And then this is that last push down. So yeah, yeah, it was, it was, it was pretty nice. I liked it. Um, so that's, that's uh, Chef JPY. Uh, yes, sessions by chart. So look, it's, it's this right here. Hold on, go to indicators, just type in sessions on chart right here. This one right here, that's the one I use, all right. Um, all right, so that's that's Chef JPY. Uh, I got my alert set. Uh, again, no limits for me. I want to see schematics in them. You know, get the schematics, get tight entries, um, and and play it off of there. EJ, kind of the same thing on EJ, right? Um, so on EJ, now EJ didn't sweep the Asian lows. You know, it is what it is. But um, EJ, if we come over here, EJ kind of ticked me off. So. This is, oh, no, there we go. This is what I wanted to play out of, right? So we had this massive reaccumulation. I really like this four-hour candle. I wanted it to see us touch the 50%. Um, we missed it by, what did we miss it by? We missed it by 7.3 pips is what we missed it by. It is what it is. That's, you know, um, I laugh, you know, I wanted to see the accumulation in here. Um, man, when did I, hold on. I'm going to look this up right now. I'm going to look how, how long have I, let's just see, desktop, pen and trades, EJ. So EJ, and this would have been April. So when in April? I'm just curious how long I've been waiting for this stupid thing to come in there. It's got to, it's got to be a, a pretty long time. Let's see. Do you uh, slingshot? Is that your previous videos or where can I, my slingshot candle? Yeah. It's just, it's the candle I, I call that, that breaks a new high or new low. Uh, but yeah, you can, I mean, I got plenty of stuff that I've been, you know, that's in there. Um, yeah. Where is that? Yeah, here you go. So what is this? This is QLE6, QLE. Yeah, this one right here. So here, you guys want to know how long I've been waiting on this stupid EJ trade. Here, give me a second. I've been waiting. So this is out, this is out of my journal. This this is the picture I took out of my journal just now. So it's this this one right here. So yeah, uh, April twenty seventh. I've been waiting since April twenty seventh for us to come back into like the one thirty area. I was looking at this area right here out of this reaccumulation. So patience is everything, you know. Um, granted, I've been in buys on this from from down here in the bottom left, but we finally got it. So I waited, what was it, like 27 days for that buy down here. I've been waiting since we broke this high. I've been waiting a meager 54 days. So <clears throat> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, there's no, for me, there's no more. Now there's no longer a limit order in play. Yeah, yeah. For me, there's no longer uh, a limit order in play. I'm going to play, I'm going to play off of what I see uh, price action doing. So um, this, this kind of makeshift schematic here, if you want to call it a schematic, I, I'm not interested in playing that. Um, what I am interested in playing the reaccumulation. So, you know, same thing. We had, we had a distribution, the distribution failed, right? Um, ultimately this is your, this is your trading range, right? Um, you had your one, two, three drives price should have broken structure and gone to the downside. We didn't, um, what we did do is we had a creek, we made a new high, new high, creek equals reaccumulation. All right. So now what I want to do is I want to play out of this reaccumulation here on the lower time frame, which is my slingshot, or I want to play out of this candle right here, this shakeout, just like on Chef JPY. 
So either of these two areas is where I'm going to be looking for schematics to take this bad boy up. All right. Um, and, um, you know, I'm still targeting 136. 136 is where I want to get this bad boy up to. Um, I'm still holding par I'm still holding that those three lots out of this thing here. So 136 will take us into that weekly, uh, into that weekly imbalance. I'm sorry, the weekly distribution supply point. All right. Uh, and into this weekly candle right here, that nice weekly candle right up here. All right. So that's, that's ultimately my target, you know? Um, and I, I'm, I'm pretty happy with what, what EJ has been doing. Uh, let's Price would have to break below your original order at 128 to be considered all overall bearish. Uh, yeah, well, so from a from like an intraday perspective, right? I'll tell you right now, I would I would close out this buy if we were if we were to have taken out this low right here, I would have closed out the buy. I would have closed this 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 order out right here. Um, and at that point, we would be bearish intraday, bearish lower time frame. So I would I would look for sells. Um, yeah, that's that's ultimately what I would have to do. What's going on? How you doing, man? Um, yeah, so that's EJ. Now, GJ is the other one I'd be looking at. Um, same thing, man. I have been waiting. I mean, I know everybody's been hearing me talk about waiting on GJ to come back into this area or this area. We finally came into this stupid thing. Um, you know, I waited. I waited 41 days, 41 days for us to finally come into this. Um, and it, it didn't even give me an entry. I was so pissed. This thing has rallied 300 pips since Friday, you know, 300 pips since Friday. So it is what it is. I'm, I'm, I'm not bitter about it. Um, I was kind of hoping that we were going to see some, some sort of mitigation out of this push. We haven't, uh, so I'm going to trade what I see, right? So from, from a distribution standpoint, right? You have your, you have your distro, right? Distro pulls in, comes back to mitigate and then makes a new low. So you have your distro, one drive, two drives down. And this was an entry. If any of you guys caught it, you know, congrats, but this was the entry this morning. It was probably one of the cleanest type one schematics you'll see uh, early in the week. But this was, uh, for me, this was just a really clean entry. Um, you know, had all the, all the makings of a proper schematic. Um, I didn't mark out my PS, but I probably, you know, this right here is probably going to be your PS. That's your original preliminary support. Um, but I can, like I said, I, I've honestly, I don't care about marking out my PS, my PSY. Um, you know, I, I do, I do see some validity in, uh, in the distances that some of these, um, some of these schematics are able to really give out if they have a proper PS or PSY, but you know, there's not, for me, at least there's not a lot of correlation to it. Um, you know, if it does give a PS typically they, they tend to move a little further. Um, but I'm still going to trade the schematic. So for me, this was a really clean schematic. Um, you know, everything, everything made sense, came in, gave a really nice test. This was, uh, off of the 50% of the third three minute that's what it was so for me three minute most volume is candle i mean that right there should say it all um not only did you have the you know the lower time frame schematic but if you just look right here this was your your micro schematic one two three drives and then a spring you know spring break structure right here entry was right here off the test okay so that's that's entry number one and then, of course, what I would be waiting for is, you know, price ends up having a reaccumulation right here, uh, and then confirming the overall higher time frame, or you know, not the higher time frame, but you know, the the overall reaccumulation by this break right here. So it was, yeah, right there. So that's the break. So ideally, what. Yeah. So for me, this is now this reaccumulation Creek attempted distro, right? Three drives up one, two drives down. This is the first area that I would have been looking. And then obviously out of this area here would be the other area. Uh, for me, I was, I put a limit order off the four minute. 
yeah, put a limit order off this four minute candle right here. Really nice volume is candle. Um, you know, it was like a 4.7 pip stop. Um, and obviously we just, we never returned to it. So I was looking for a potential this afternoon, or I guess this morning, I was looking for a potential out of here. Um, I just wanted to come a little lower and I do think we did come to 50. Yeah, we did come to 50%. So we came to 50% of that push. You could see it right here. We, we came right into that 50%. Um, but it just didn't give me anything that I really wanted to take at that premium price. Like if you look at the one minute, just not a lot of, you know, really nice price action. It is a schematic, right? This is your schematic, you know, one drive, two drives, three drives. It's a, it's a type five, right? Not a type one. And I definitely wasn't going to be taking a type five entry off of premium pricing out of a slingshot candle on a Tuesday morning. That just my, my journal um, would have jumped out of my computer screen and like slapped me for doing that. So yeah, there was no entry out of there. I'm still going to be waiting for this down here. Uh, for GJ, we swept below Asian and it accumulation and sole reason to take that. Uh, well, it wasn't that the sole reason to take the trade, right? Um, the, when you're looking at the distribution, right? Um, you have your distribution, you have one drive and you have, you know, your second drive. If I'm selling GJ, if I was in a sell and say, let's say I get into this entry right here, the last thing I want to see if I'm selling is crappy price action in my cell with a, in my opinion, a picture perfect, print it out, throwing on your, throw it on your refrigerator for your mom to like view it every day at your artwork kind of accumulation schematic, right? This is the last thing I want to see if I'm going to sell. And when I look at, when I look at this chart and I ask my a simple question of, okay, what is the who is in control, what is the intent, um, and ultimately, what is the bias that I'm looking at? And I'll tell you right now, when I see, when I go back to, when I go back to this right here, if I'm looking at price like this, I'm telling you that buyers are in control, right? The, the way that this, this, we have an accumulation here that was unable to do anything, we have a distribution that couldn't really take out any of demand from here. This accumulation is telling me bye, 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 you know, especially with what happened down there. So would this have been something I put full risk on? Probably not. Um, I, I would have waited for full risk. I waited for this break of structure up here. So once we got that and price confirmed the reaccumulation, yeah, on this entry here was full risk. Yeah. Um, Let's see, had a limit at the 50% of the 25 before today and it just took and just about missed me. Really? I uh, uh, just wanted to ask where you would place TP on um, 100% partialing at the eight hour point of interest uh, on NCAD. Um, yeah, I'll be honest. I, I am not, I haven't looked at NCAD because NCAD broke intraday. Like either this or this broke the intraday over here. So I guess the question is, this is your entry here. Um, man, I, I don't know. Um, why, do you, why are you thinking this is a redistribution though? I mean, the schematic's kind of falling apart, but at this point here, my, I guess my question is, why would you think that this is a redistribution? Because you could have, you could have easily, if this, if this spring broke below here, this could, for me, I'd be waiting for this high to get taken and then get a play out of here. If I'm just looking at this. Yeah. You don't think EJ or GJ is going to come down and fill and balance. I'm sure it will at one point. Yeah. Yep. I'm sure it will at one point. Um, You feel like distro will be a re wait, what? Do I feel like distro? This distro right here? Yeah, yeah. I'm bullish on GE, man. Yeah. Yep. I'm I'm I mean, I'm gonna try and position myself in GU for buys because I want to hedge a sell just to work the next entry to go back up. But yeah, I'm 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 pretty confident. <laughs> I'm pretty confident about it. 
Um, let's see, seeing that as this accumulation didn't play out from a higher time frame POI, what made you drop down to the one minute? Um, on uh, GJ? So on GJ, on GJ, when we're looking at what happened, right? So we have our boof right here, right? This is the break of order flow. And then we make a new high, okay? And then we create that. So what I'm looking at is two points of interest. I'm looking at this, uh oh, did I just freeze up? Oh, geez, come on, man. This stupid thing. Give it a second. Trading view is doing its stupid. Uh... Oh, for the love. All right, hold on. While this is doing that stupid thing, give me a second. I'm just going to come over here. Bear with me, guys. I'm going to go over to Chrome. I don't know if it's Safari. Uh... It's shot out react me. Dude, I'll tell you what, man. I get so sick and tired of this, man. All right. So, all right. Let's go to Chrome. Hold on. Let's see if Chrome is any better. You guys don't know the aggravation of this, man. It, it, you can, I mean, some of these guys on here will tell you this, this crap happens to me every morning before New York open. Every morning. I'm trying, I'm trying to mark up a chart and, and take an entry and I'm dealing with trading view doing this stupid stuff, man. It's, it's, it drives me crazy. Um, with automatic graphics switching is turned on automatic and where, where do I on the actual Mac? Yeah, but it only happens on Safari. Yeah, it only, it only happens on Safari. So whatever on Chrome, I'll, you know, it's fine on Chrome. So anyway, going back to why I was looking at this area. Um, so I was looking at two areas, right? I was looking at this area here, and then I was looking at price coming into this area right here. Both are reaccumulations. Um, so the fact that we were, let's go to the five minute. The fact that this accumulation didn't trade below this area right here, right? This, is, this, was, this area right here would have invalidated what I wanted to see. All right, this area right here. So this is the low that had created the next push of order flow. Um, so that's why I was looking at it. You know, structure wise, like if we look at it from this perspective, what's maintaining or where is lower time frame structure? Right? What is what's what's our lower time frame structure? You know, and for me, we're not bullish on lower time frame until we break this high. Right? Because this to me was our lower time frame leg and we broke it right here right that's where we broke it so if this is where we broke lower time frame leg this is what's maintaining bearishness so <clears throat> i got to you know unfortunately i hate order flow but i got to play the order flow until we get there all right does that make sense um what are your thoughts on euro odd bro euro odd man it's uh i'll be it's it's not on my my high to do list. I'll tell you right now. I mean, I've got it on the list. I'll, I'll, we'll cover it. Um, yes. Yeah, I know. I know. You know, the only thing I like about Safari is it just, it, it's, it's nice when you have an iPhone an iPad, multiple MacBooks, you know, multiple, you know, iMacs or, or, you know, Mac, uh, Mac minis and stuff. Everything just is compatible and everything talks to each other. Yeah. So, um, Try Brave browser. Yeah, no, I know. I know. I know. I I I I will tell you what I use so I mean where you guys can see I use I use Chrome for all my crypto stuff. So um it's just I like having I like having because I have multiple displays. I like having Chrome up on one and Safari on the other. Cause I don't know if you guys have ever done this where you have uh two screens. Uh if you have two trading views on Safari open or two trading view uh on Chrome, like you'll start getting some some issues when you're saving stuff. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. 
who are some of the people I learned from the most. Um, I'll tell you what, like if you're an IM, uh, Zach McDonald is probably was the most influential educator that I got a lot of my knowledge from. Um, and then just the rest of the stuff, um, you know, like my journaling techniques, my, you know, understanding of structure, um, you know, understanding, really understanding of schematics and stuff was, you know, a lot of just me and my trading partner getting into, um, getting into books, getting into back testing, getting into, um, you know, spending hours and hours and hours, uh, marking up charts. And, um, you know, I do credit a, uh, a mentor that, you know, I did, I, I did do like a mentorship with him for like three months, uh, definitely worth the money I spent. So, uh, so yeah, but, um, I mean, we'll talk about it in the morning for the limit order, but just in a nutshell, like if you're, if you're bullish, so like on GJ, right? Um, we're bullish higher time frame, we're bullish intraday. The lower time frame is not bullish, but if we're playing, if we're playing this order flow until this order flow gets invalidated. So like if if GJ does this and then makes a new high, now this becomes order flow low, this is off the table. You know what I'm saying? Um yeah. Um the and then of course, you know, like we I talk about if this is what's maintaining lower time frame. Um, this is still going to be in play. And this is like whoever asked about like the imbalance. If, um, if this is our, our lower time frame leg and we break this, right. Then this is what's maintaining lower time frame structure. We're back in lower time frame, intraday, higher time frame. We're bullish all three. I'd be, I'd be very interested in putting a limit order off of this, this candle right here, you know, 50, 80, put a limit order get this to come back, mitigate imbalance to go higher. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Exactly. Um, what's I am, I am, it's, uh, it's a company where I learned some of my beginning trading stuff. Yeah. Uh, I, what is it called? I, uh, I am mastery Academy now. I think it was like I markets live when I first started, but, uh, yeah, yeah I got you. You got it, man. You got it. No worries. Um, so yeah, that, that, that was GJ, right. Um, again, I'm, I'm definitely, for right now, um, I'm, I'm pretty happy setting a limit off this four minute. Um, now if price, if price distributes, like it is comes down, you know, plays into something here and then makes a new high then, and then this would be what's maintaining order flow. This is off the table for me. So it's just going to be one of those things, um, that, that I have no problem playing with. All right. So that's, that's kind of what I'm looking at. Um, let's see. Okay. So the other thing, so we'll just go down the list. Euro odds on my list, right? Uh, can I look at ACAD? Yeah. I, I'll tell you right now, like, I'm not too happy with ACAD. I had a pending order on it this morning or I was thinking about putting a pending order. I, I didn't actually put it in. Um, I'm not, I'm not happy with the price action on it. So I'll, we'll, we'll get to it. Well, I'll look at it. Um, all right. So EA, EA has, man, I'll tell you what, EA is definitely going to teach you some patience. EA, how long have we been in this stupid schematic? We've been 32 days. So an entire month it's been in this reaccumulation. Um, I personally, I'll tell you right now, um, I'm kind of looking at this distribution. There's two ways I'm going to get into an EA buy and I'm only looking at EA buy. I'm not looking at an EA sell. Um, we've, we've invalidated the distribution, right? So this distribution should have made new lows. Instead, what does price do? It does a distribution into multiple accumulations, which then invalidates the high, right? So what I would be looking for is to see if this distribution actually has enough to get us down into this push right here. All right. This is the push that I want to see us now um, ultimately play into. The the one thing I'm not going to do is I'm not setting a limit order. You can see I've got my alert, look for buys. Um, I kind of want to focus in on this area right here is where I want to look for a buy. And, um, you know, if we can get down there, great. I'll look for a schematic. Um, I mean, there's definitely cleaner setups for me. Uh, the JPY crosses are definitely cleaner. And then the pound crosses are definitely cleaner. But, you know, if it wants to give me a schematic in this area right here, 
then yeah, I'll, I'll be looking for buys to take it up. All right. Um, you know, it's just, it's just paying attention to what price has been doing. You know, um, I was definitely, I was looking for sells. Like when I saw this distribution here, there was a, a possibility that this would ultimately get us to go lower. Um, but if you really pay, if you just, you know, look at it, right. What are we seeing? We're seeing massive bullish momentum and we're, what we're not seeing is we're not seeing any valid distributions. Every distribution becomes invalidated, right? Distribution invalidated, distribution invalidated, distribution invalidated, distro invalidated, distro invalidated. I mean, how many times are you going to bet on the distro and, and, you know, not see it do anything. So what I would really like to see, I'll tell you right now is I talked about the two areas. This is the first thing that I would love to do, but what I would really, really appreciate is if this distro did that broke above this high and then came down, I would be playing out of whatever shakeout we got to go higher. Yeah. Uh, oh, is that the reaccumulation area you were talking about, bro? This one right here. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. That's, and that's, that's going to be the second, that's going to be the second uh, POI that I'm going to be looking at. Right. So EA for me is definitely, uh, I'm looking at buys like there, you know, something pretty major needs to happen for me to really kind of pay attention and, and see what I want to do with it. Um, you know, but this distro, you know, if we maybe get something like that, uh, it may present two opportunities, right? If we get an accumulation here, right? Entry number one, we have our creek, break of structure, come back to mitigate out of here. It'll be the LPS and the test of the shakeout LPS of this entry. So you get one entry, two entry, you know, and then, you know, I'll be looking for some higher, higher targets. Um, but yeah, e EA, I mean, that's, that's kind of what I'm looking at. I'm not looking at it. I'm definitely not looking at trying to sell out of this distro, you know, um, it's, it's, we, we would have to, I, if I'm going to look for sales, I want to see the distro really invalidate some sort of demand and buyers have been just feasting on everything. I mean, there, there's just no signs of, of weakness at all in any of this. All right. Um, so that's, that's EA here real quick. I'll, I'll just go over ACAD. So I was looking at ACAD, um, you know, like I said, the, the price action just kind of fell apart here. The, you know, the area was pretty clean. We had a, we had a nice schematic that broke structure. We had a distribution that I was hoping was going to turn into reaccumulation. Uh, let's get down to like a 15. Um, we had an accumulation that we had in here, right? Um, I actually took an entry out of this. I think on Friday, I took an entry, um, got partials out of it. But if you look at it, we were unable to break actual structure. Right. I really wanted this to break structure. I was looking at this as a reaccumulation, or I'm sorry, as an accumulation. Um, but I talked about it yesterday to some people. I was, I, I just was really this this candle here at changeover really just gave me a bad feeling. Um, and then ultimately we ended up invalidating this area here. So I was a little bit um on the fence about taking this buy. And the reason I was on the fence about that is you know where we traded into but it, it did kind of make sense like we traded into the 50 percent of the four hour right so if we look at this four hour candle right here um we did trade into 50 percent of it uh, actually 50 percent was like right here so we did tag into the 50 percent um but i'm just not happy with the price action i'm not uh i was looking at this accumulation down in here to take a potential buy out of um, and I was looking at the 20 minute candle, um, this happened at changeover. So there was no way I was even going to get into this trade, but, you know, I had an alert up here for, uh, for this distribution to confirm as a reaccumulation. So if we got something like that, then I would be looking to play out of it. Um, but at this point, I, I'm just going to like, let it do its thing. What's the difference between a break of structure and order flow structure is structure, right? Order flow. Like when, I don't know if you, how, how you, how you have learned structure, um, but every high and low is not structure. So, you know, you could potentially have stuff like this, right? So structure is this, right? This, when we create this high and we break this high or this high right here, this becomes now the 
lower time frame structure point, right? Um, and then if you have this, this is all order flow, right? This is bearish order flow with bullish structure. So yeah, you know, you can have, I mean, what was that? I think it was UCAD that one time we talked about order flow and in the span of like a month, just on the higher time frame, there was like, I don't know, like seven stop loss hits if you played off the order flow. So yeah, 80% um, of the 11 hour, 80% of the 11 hour. Let's see, bro. 80%. You talking about this right here? Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's, what do I have? I have, so my point of interest, like I said, is the first, the four hour, but then the, the voluminous candle that I found, uh, I wanted to play the 410 minute. So I was looking at the 410. Don't forget that the daily, right? You have the daily candle right here. Um, you have, what else was I looking at? I was looking, geez, all the way down here in the five minute. What happened in here? Yeah, yeah. So yeah, this, these are the two points of interest I'd be looking at right down in here. So we did have, we did have this. So if you go way down in here, look at the one minute. Um, you know, we had a really nice clean schematic in here. So if we are going to come into the extreme, the extreme I'd be looking at is going to be right in here. Right. So like 90, 92, 63 to like 92, 65, those two pips right in here is, is really where I'm going to be looking at it. All right. Um, so yeah, that's, that's kind of what, what I'd be, I'd be targeting um, until, until we get into that, into that area. Um, yeah. I mean, we'll, we'll ultimately see, you know, I, the one thing that, um, and you can see, I still have my alert down here. Look for buys. If we get into that accumulation, um, we'll see, we'll see how it, how it plays out. All right. Um, but at this point there, it's either going to go, to, we're going to go lower or we're going to create this high. And if we create this high, right, if we create this high, here's your Creek, this is your reaccumulation. Um, play the high. I'd be looking for this as the shakeout, you know, potentially this is a reaccumulation on its own. So, you know, find my slingshot, find my extreme play off of those like that, you know? So that's, that's how I'm going to kind of play a cat. All right. Um, all right. So that's a CAD. This is, we talked about EA. I'll tell you right now, EN, I got nothing on EN. I'm preferring EA. EN is, looks like a bag of crap. Um, you know, I'm not, I'm not too happy with it. Originally I was looking for an entry out of this down here. Um, I, I'm just using, I have EN up here with EA just so I can see like comparable strength divergence. If, if I, if I get it, you know, if it's present there, other than, other than that, I'm not even looking at EN really for much. Um, the price action here is kind of just sloppy. Um, but now pound, right? The pound pairs. I'm bullish on GJ. I'm also bullish. Well, I will point this out. Who, hey, who, who in the Aporia group? Um, who in the Aporia group threw out that 1.85? Because I give you, I, I definitely, I laughed when I saw it. Um, because sure as crap, I've been talking about us hitting 1.85 and there you go. And we hit 1.85027, right? Uh, and actually, I mean, we traded above that too, but I've been, you know, I actually, I, I, I had to, I had to rub it in my uh, trading partner's face because uh, back in January, when I was looking at buys, he was giving me crap. He's like, I don't know why you're looking at buys on GA. You know, I was like, oh, I got a feeling. So yeah. Yeah. Around the, yep. It was January since January. I've been, I've been saying 1.85. So, and it's just, it's been a long run, you know, I mean, this is where I started looking for buys way down here. So this has been, this has been roughly a 1000 pip run, right? A 1000 pip run. Um, I wonder, I don't even know if I could still get down there to see, Oh yeah, there it is. There's all my markings. So this is when I started looking at, at GA buys when we started just accumulating and accumulating and accumulating. So yeah, plenty, really nice entries. Um, yeah. So looking at what we're doing now, right. The way I'm going to play this is this stupid. They need to hurry up and delete this stupid wick, but um, 
what I'm what I'm looking at now is we have a distribution, right? Distribution caused the shakeout. All right. And at this point here, what I'm going to look for is I'm going to look for an accumulation. Why is there two? Hold on. There we go. All right. So out of this reaccumulation, I'm going to be looking for a schematic. Um, ideally, this is going to be point of interest number one right here. And then out of this push right here is going to be point of interest number two. So, you know, I'm act actually, let me move this up just a little. There we go. So if I get a schematic and I'm only taking, you know, on a Wednesday, I've, I've determined <laughs> that I'm only taking type one schematics on Wednesdays, Tuesdays and Wednesdays are only type one days. So if I get a type one, I'll take it, I'll pull the trigger on it. Um, and if we come lower, because, you know, we could, we honestly could still come lower. Um, this is what I'm looking at, right? So this right now, this spring is what's maintaining structure for me. Okay. Uh, this is what's maintaining structure. Um, we had a really nice accumulation. We had a really nice test. We had a really nice LPS. This accumulation did what? It created a new high, right? So demand is sitting here. Um, the key area I'm going to be looking at if we come lower is going to be right here, right? Um, I was really upset that I had a limit order. This, this candle right here was New Zealand news last week. I had a limit order set um, and I just didn't get filled. The, uh, I, I guess the spreads just went crazy, but I had a limit order set off of this reaccumulation once we broke uh, through the limit. Actually, that's what it was, the 612. I had 80 off the 80% of the 612. So this was the candle I was going to play off of. And yeah, it just, um, no bueno, you know, my brokers, actually every one of my brokers, the two prop firm brokers and, uh, and my personal broker, they all said, nope, ain't going to happen. <clears throat> so it sucks because that was a really, really nice play. And I mean, you could see this thing ended up going from my entry. This ended up going 200 something pips. So that's, that's ultimately what I'm looking at. If we trade below there, I want to play into, I want to play into this, right? This is what I want to play into right here. And ultimately I'm going to look for an accumulation out of there. Right. Um, otherwise the stop loss would be just way too massive. So that's kind of what I've got on my, on my plate for GA. Um, and, you know, we, we very easily could see this happen uh, come London. I'm not interested. I'll tell you right now, I'm not interested in taking a schematic during Asian unless we're in the higher time frame or intraday um, extreme. So we're nowhere near it. So I'm not even going to play around with it. Let's see on this. Let's see, bro. Oh, wait, son of a gun. Hold on. It opened it up on, uh, it opened it up on Safari. Give me a sec. Let's go over here. All right. So <clears throat> on the one hour, um, all right. So my only question is this, why do you want to trade below here? I guess that would be my question. Um, when we look at, right, so let's see. So like when we look at that price action, right? Um, Cause this is, hold on, am I looking at it right? Uh, you're on the one hour, let me go to the one hour. Uh, equal lows and mitigation of the 68 minute candle um so you're looking at one just below 197 wait a minute gn oh on gn my bad bro yeah yeah hold on we'll take a look at gn yeah 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 um yeah we'll look at this one too here hold on see what you got bro yeah i'll look at gn hold on uh btc um yeah i mean it's same thing i uh for right now i'm labeling this as my spring because this is my secondary test 
potentially this is my test in B. Um, and this will confirm as the spring when we get that, right? And then I'd be looking for the test to go higher. So yeah, for right now, and, and yeah, I mean, you're right, because there is, you don't know what this is gonna be yet. At, at, for right now, this is a secondary test, right? If this ends up trading above this, then I would confirm that as the spring. Yeah. Uh, which prop firms do I trade for? Uh, FTMO and uh, the prop trading firm, TPT. It's an Australian-based one. Um, there's a fractal. Okay. Yeah, but I'm, I'll tell you right now, I'm not playing the... Um, I am, I'm personally not playing any of the, uh, the margin stuff. I'm just doing it for investment side. And I'm really not even adding on... Uh, I don't know if I call this. So here's the issue though. Like this would have to be my second secondary test. And then this would have to be my test in B. And I just don't really like this price action here. Yeah. So yeah, for, for me, I, I mean, it could, it could be. It could be, I'm going to wait for the higher time frame schematic to play out. And then what I'll do is on the, if this, you know, on the higher time frame schematic, I'll wait for it to play. And then that's when I'll start dumping some more money in some cryptos because the way BTC goes is the way the rest of the crypto world goes. BTC is bullish. The rest of the crypto world is going to be bullish, you know? So uh, into, have I looked into my Forex fund? Uh, I have not. But I want to say, like, I get spam emails from them, bro. And that's never a good sign. But hold on. Let me, I'll tell you right now. Let me just check. Uh, ch -ch -ch -ch. Yeah, no, I don't, I deleted all of it. Um, yeah. Buy and hold. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But no, it's a, it's, I, I mean, yeah. I, I like I like the schematic. I've got the same thing. I'm waiting on it to add on. All right, so let's look at GN. Uh, yeah, we'll go to GN. So GN is a little different, right? Because GN did not break, right? We did not get a break to confirm the reaccumulation. So what I'm looking at is I'm looking for an accumulation out of here, All right? And I think this is what you want to sweep. You want this to get swept, and you want to play out of out of here, right? If I'm if I'm remembering, let's see. Uh, you're looking for an entry at 96.88, 96.88. So, yeah, you're looking you're looking for an entry out of this. So, I mean, I I could tell you like how I'm gonna play it um, structure wise, right? From a st structure perspective, we had a high. Um, we ultimately pushed in a low, we made a new high, pushed in a low, and then made a new high. So from a structure perspective, this is what's maintaining lower time frame. So if I'm bullish across the board, I got to look for buys at a lower time frame. Um, I'm also, I, I, I know exactly what happened down in here. So I know that it was just a ton of accumulations. So I really don't want to see a trade below here because then if we trade below here, we're not stopping here. I can tell you that, right? If we, if we violate the lower time frame, we're going to come into the intraday. And the intraday for me is right down here. This, this, this entry down here is what's maintaining the intraday because from the intraday perspective, we had this hot, oh, wow, look at that thing spin. Holy crap, look at that. <laughs> Uh, from the intraday perspective, um, this was the high. We just made a new high, which meant this is what's maintaining the low. And then this is just a massive higher time frame reaccumulation. Um, so, yeah, I mean, that's, that's kind of how I'm looking at it. Um, I can tell you that once I really got into Wyckoff and understood supply, demand, cause, effect, what schematics were doing, um, I really stopped paying attention to just equal highs and equal lows, right? Um, 
when we look at what happened in here, right? Like if we just go to this five minute, okay? Let's look at this, let's look at this push, right? So we had ultimately a really clean type one schematic right here, right? This is your type one, here's your spring. Um, that spring gets mitigated out by here. And in here was actually, I think it was, if I remember correctly, cause I know we back tested this. Uh, I think it was actually here. I'll just look on the damn back test. Hold on. I think it was like a, a 15 second or was it forex.com? Hold on. Not forex.com. Which one do we back? How do, where do we back test it? FXCM? Uh, nope. Hold on. Oh, don't tell me I deleted the back test. Yeah, I watch it be like global prime. All right. Well, I think I deleted the back test. Um, but just going, going back into it, um, going back into it. When we mitigated, when we mitigated this, Maybe it was right in here. Yeah. So when we mitigated, I think it was the one minute. So hold on. I'm, gonna, I'm just going to see. All right. So we have this one minute candle right here. Right. 50% gets mitigated. So the 80% is what we were looking at. And inside of this one minute, I believe was like a 15 second schematic. Um, I don't know if it's going to let me get down there. Let's see. Yeah, yeah, okay, perfect. So there we go. So here's your schematic, all right? Here's your schematic. And this is ultimately your spring that sweeps the entire schematic. So this right here is your type one, all right? One, two, three drives, spring. Now what we're looking for is price to come back into that one sec or that one minute candle. Um, and if we go, so I marked out that 80%. I marked out 80% of that one minute candle and where does price come into? So, <laughs> so 80% of that one minute candle, right? That we looked at, what does price come into? So for me, it's not equal lows. Like it's not like liquidity sitting there. It was purposeful, right? It came into that five second schematic and yeah, I mean that was a that was a that was a one point four pip stop. You know, would I have taken it? Um, I don't know if I would have actually taken it. I could tell you that when we back tested it, I I put it in because I saw it, and you know, when you back test, you're a little more uh, you're a little more aggressive. But it made sense, right? Because why why would they need to come back into there? Because that was the extreme that caused this break right here. Right. And then from there, what did price do? Price just rallied. So, I mean, it ends up not even coming back into that point. Um, so that's, that's kind of why I am very, very eager to look for buys on, um, on GN out of this area right here. Right. So ultimately what I want to see is we know that from this high to this low, this is 80%, this is 50%, right? Now I'm not setting a limit because it's it's lower time frame. So, and I'm not gonna set a limit off of a lower time frame. I need a schematic, but it just kind of gives me an idea. I wanna see a schematic like in this area or in this area right here, all right? Um, but yeah, so for that person, whoever asked me, why do I like the 80%? Uh, <laughs> that right there should answer why I like the 80%. So yeah, um, let's see. Can you look at UCAD on the one minute? Uh, I can look, but yeah. Let's see. Let's see. UCAD on the one minute. Oh, wait a minute. Um. <laughs> no. So here's your trading range. Mark out your trading range. That's your trading range. This is your AR. So that's not there. That's not there. 
Um, this is your ST. Good, good. Uh, UA needs to trade above the AR, so not a UA. Um, and yeah. So this is going to be your secondary test and you haven't broken structure, right? So look at it from this perspective. This low is above this, right? So this isn't a new low. So if this is our low, this is a previous low, this is the structure you need to break, right? But you only have three drives, one, two, three drives. So for me, this is, this is a secondary test until you get to phase C, right? How do we know you get to phase C? You exit the trading range and it has to be equal to a sign of strength, right? Or, or you get a spring, get a spring, then we have a break of structure and then that's your entry. All right, does that make, does that make sense, bro? Hopefully, hopefully it does. Um, oh, my bad. Hold on. Let's see. The safe stop loss on GA would have been the low for me. Um, all right. I don't know what I don't know what you mean by it. Uh, on GA. Yeah, I don't. My bad. Uh, yep. Thank you. All my questions. Are yeah, yeah. Yeah. Just keep in mind this, though. A schematic does not need to have a UA, right? Um, when you're looking at a schematic, right? Um, when you're looking at a schematic, as long as, and, and like if we, let's just go back to yours real quick, bro. Um, because this isn't a UA, does it mean that this is invalid? No. What this is showing me that buys came in here, buyers were strong to come in. Buyers were strong to come in, right? It's showing me that they're testing and pushing up to the top end of this trading range. Uh, the one thing I will tell you, though, is um, this is current price action, right? Is this current price action? Let me see. Because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you, I'll, I'll give you the best advice anybody could give you, bro. <laughs> All right, yeah. So here's, here's your schematic right here. I, I see it. I see it. Okay. So you could do one of two things. And, and this is just my, my personal opinion, right? Um, so get yourself the session tool, right? And when you start to see a schematic that starts to form in the yellow, right? So you can see the yellow. Um, now this is all New York session here. What I would be pretty convinced at is one, where the heck is this forming? So we'll look at UCAD when we get to it, but um, if it's forming in a right area, and we start to get into Asian session, um, I would hope that we continue sideways because I want London to cause the spring, New York to do something like this, right? But to keep you sane and not, um, not like chasing moves during Sydney or Asian session, what you want to do is you want to get yourself a box, right? And you want to create yourself the, I call it the Asian hideout and just do that. And that will alleviate a lot of your losses during Asian session. It's like price action never even existed. All right, there you go. That's my piece. I hate Asian session with a passion. Um, what's the difference between exit of a trading range versus sign of strength? They are not always the same. No, because I'll tell you right now, if this was your trading range, if price does this, is that a sign of strength? For me, it's not. For me, it's not. That isn't a sign of strength. Uh, a sign of strength is I want, to, I want to understand that the last push when price comes in here and we get that, I can say that this is the last area that buyers came in. And now what I want is I want the mitigation. Right. I don't want to see or I don't want to have evidence that they still need to fill orders because price can break structure. And I'm sure if you look at your journals at, at some of the losses on type twos that you took, right? Price can do this and break out of the trading range and come right down and create a spring and then break structure and then do this. So that's why for me, I need a sign of strength. Uh, what's up, dude? How are you doing, man? Uh, I did, man. It's cut. You got it, bro. Yeah, dude, I'm telling you back testing 
dude, people, people, people looked at me with like, I had like three heads when I told them I back tested over 5,000 charts, you know, um, dude, I'm, I'm staring at my bookshelf right now and I've got seven, four inch binders full of charts that I back tested winners, losers, trades. I didn't take trades. I, you know, I, I paper traded trades. I demo traded. Um, I'll tell you what, the best thing you can do for yourself, if you really are looking uh, for success and understanding on what your personal confirmations need to be. Cause I'll tell you, everyone's confirmations are going to be different. My confirmations will be different than yours. Yours will be different than the next person's. Um, the best thing you can do is get a demo account, start putting in all of your trades and don't, don't even worry about over trading. Right. Uh, one of the things I did was any trade I can see, you know, any reaccumulation, any accumulation, any distro, redistro, any structure, order flow, anything I can do. Um, I would, you know, pick different sessions, you know, like some days I would, I would trade New York, some days London, some days Asian, and take the trades, journal them. So obviously take only as many as you can journal and collect the data. Um, because you know, the data you get out of 15 trades is going to be massively different the data you get out of a thousand trades, you know? Uh, and, you know, at the end, you'll be able to look at your data and you'll be able to see, you know, okay, so I, what you're telling me is, you know, Mike, you trade the best on Wednesday nights, Thursdays, Friday mornings, and you really kill type one schematics and you really are really, really killing pound pairs and UCAD and I don't remember what the other one was. Oh, and EJ, right? So what you're telling me is if I see a type one schematic on a Wednesday night, Thursday, or Friday morning, if I see a type one schematic on EJ, GA, GN, or UCAD, I have a pretty good chance of winning that trade and getting some massive profits. So that's what that journal is going to give you. All right. So yeah, man, Menender, you got it, man. You know, keep it up, bro. Absolutely. Um, what's the settings on the session indicator? Um, so like the sessions, the settings I use are right here. Let's see. So under inputs, this is the key. Like if you don't want your charts to have all these lines on it, just activate high and low. Um, and then I just, I never have Sydney session because as far as I'm concerned, like I'll never take an entry during Sydney session. So it doesn't matter. Um, like I don't have it checked. Uh, and then after that, it's just picking your colors, you know, whatever you want to, whatever you want to have the colors, uh, and then just change the opacity. All right. So that's, that's the settings. Um, you got it, bro. You got it, man. Um, cool. All right. So going back to GN, you know, hopefully, I mean, listen, I could be a hundred percent wrong and it could, it could sweep the lows. I could just tell you that. Um, if we trade below this point, right? If we trade below and it's actually held on. Yeah. If we trade below this low right here, um, I'm, I'm going to be inclined to see price come way lower and not into this, right? Because as far as I'm concerned, this reaccumulation has been mitigated, right? When price came up and we had this one, two, three drive schematic, right? this was the mitigation of that. So I don't want price to invalidate demand, right? Where buyers came into the market to then mitigate out of here just to go higher. That's a lot of momentum shift. Um, and it's not something that I, I see a lot. Um, you know, so if we, if we do invalidate that, then I'm going to be, I'm going to be looking lower, you know, I'm going to be looking for us I'm going to be looking, you know, down in this area here. All right. Yeah. So that's, that's kind of what I'm looking at here. Uh, pound chef, same thing. I'm bullish as crap on this. I've got my alert sitting right here. New high made once that new high is made. Um, you know, I, I was looking at it last week. I wanted us, I wanted, or the week before, I guess I wanted an accumulation out of this area. It gave an accumulation, man. It was just ugly as crap. Nothing I wanted to take. Uh, so now we pop up here, you know, obviously what I'm going to be looking for is pullbacks into this area right here. Um, this is the reaccumulation, specifically this candle right here. This is the reaccumulation that ultimately started the move, the run up. Um, I'll be honest, I'm not really looking too much into this because, I mean, 
and, and just kind of focus in on this, right? Um, ask yourself, I'm, I'm definitely bullish on it. I'm not discrediting the bullishness on it. We had a high, we made a new high. We had a distribution that did nothing. Distribution was a confirmed reaccumulation into another reaccumulation into a distribution, all right? This little tiny, eeny weeny, you know, itty bitty distribution wasn't able to break the intraday low. Instead, what do we get? We get a massive accumulation into a distribution, which I'm waiting on this break right here to confirm a reaccumulation. If that happens, you have an accumulation into a reaccumulation. I'm expecting us to take out this high up here. All right. Yeah, it is sideways for a long time, man. I mean, you guys will, you guys, I, you guys remember when we were training this in May and we, we caught some decent moves on it, but it just, yeah, it's, it's been, I mean, from the start of the accumulation, we're talking 74 days, you know, 74 days for 160, 170 pip range. So I'm, it's not, it's not on my high to-do list, you know, but it is something that if we do confirm the reaccumulation, I would be looking for price to pull back and get into a, into a buy off of that. All right. Um, we talked about GN, let's go GU, right? So yeah, someone said distro on GU. Um, yep, there is a distro on GU. The question is, what's that distro done, right? Um, as far as I'm concerned, we broke this high right here, which means this is what maintains intraday, right? That's what maintaining intraday. Um, I was looking for that. I had I had this limit order right here all day long. I had that limit order set. Uh, I was really hoping we were going to come into it, and that was a big fat negative. We did not. So what do we do instead? Well, we have a type two schematic, right? Type two schematic that gives us a boof, right? Gives us a boof. So coming out of that type two schematic, I was really looking for price to come back down and mitigate this. We didn't get it. Instead, what do we do, right? We have an accumulation. Oh, I got the Asian tool. Uh, we have an accumulation, right? A reaccumulation that uh, ultimately causes the boof. And I don't know if you guys could see it, but we get an accumulation down in there, right? Uh, this happened way before I got up this morning. So there was no trade, but you can kind of see you can kind of see the accumulation going on in here, right? Um, you know, ultimately, this is your trading range. So you have your, you have your climax. Uh, let's see, there we go. You have your, no, no, right here. You have your climax. There we go. So this is your SC. SC to your AR clearly defines your trading range. All right, out of your trading range, one of the things I like to do is I like to mark out 50% of my trading range. So 50% 50, 50 mark is right there. Bear with me, hold on. Sorry guys, my ring camera is going off. Let me just turn all of the ring notifications off. All right, cool. Alrighty, there we go. All right, so we have a secondary test. We have a Another secondary test. And the key for me was every secondary test at least pushed to 50% of the trading range, right? And then we ultimately get our spring, right? So we get our spring. And what I want to see is I want to see the break of structure, right? So my break of structure, if this is our low, what's our previous low? Our previous low is this low right here, which means this for me is the structure break that I would have wanted inside of the schematic, all right? So now coming out of that structure break, what is, you know, what's my target? Um, honestly, I didn't even look what the, what the schematic was, but if you go from the entire move, 
right? The entire move, this is 80% right here. So this would have been the area I would have been looking for. Um, I didn't go, let me see, do we have lower time frame? Uh, so we have imbalance here at 30 second. What's the 15 second look like? Yeah, crap. Okay. Um, you know, I'm curious. Did anyone, did anyone take this trade? Did, uh, did anyone see what the candle is? Let me. I really don't see much two minute and the one minute. Yeah. I really don't have much of a candle. Um, but that would have been, that would have been something I would, you know, potentially would have been able to play. Um, and then ultimately, what do we get here? Then we just get an, you know, this in itself is a reaccumulation, right? We have, we have a reaccumulation that forms in here. All right. This is your Creek, right? There's your Creek like that. All right. Um, so this is, this is the test. This would have been the entry that I would have taken, but this was at 550 my time in the morning. Ain't no way I was going to be up for that. Um, you know, and, and then from there, you know, price just kind of did its thing, but there was a decent schematic. Um, there, I don't think there was another re-entry after that because price just took off, you know, um, you know, so going forward on GU, like what I'm looking for is right now, this is what's maintaining the order flow, right? So the two areas that I'm going to be looking at are out of this reaccumulation right here um, or out of, what is it, like the 10 minute maybe down there? Yeah, I mean, honestly, it doesn't matter where it's at because I need a, I need a limit order or a, I need a schematic. I can't take a limit order. Um, but if we get a, if we get a schematic in this area right here, or if we get it in this area down here, that's kind of kind of what I'm going to be looking at. So I have a, I have an alert set right here. As soon as price starts to trade lower, I'm going to start looking for buys out of these two points, right? And the key is, you know, this schematic created a new high which invalidated, right? Which invalidated this distribution. So that's going to be the key, right? For me, that's going to be my key. Um, and that's what I'm going to be looking on GU. Um, overall, like I, I, I know I talked about it earlier, I'm, I'm pretty confident that this distribution here is going to be invalidated. You know, um, now will I look for a hedge? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, if I could put the, position myself in a buy, if we when we come up into this area here, which is the last point of supply, um, I'll be looking for a lower time frame distro to take the market lower into a pullback where I would look for market cycle. I'd look for that accumulation to they can go higher and take out the high, right? So I'd be looking for the sell to hedge because I'll be in this buy and I'll be protected. Um, and then when we get down into the next area that I'll be looking for some demand buys, that's what I'll be doing, you know, buying it up. Uh, but overall, I'm, I'm bullish on GU. You know, I'm pretty, I'm pretty happy with how GU's price action has been. Um, I really like how we distributed uh, up here, and we distributed by taking out this high, right? So that was that was something I really liked about it. Uh, did I do US thirty yet? No, man. No, US thirty is a mess, bro. US thirty is a mess. Um, all right, NJ. So NJ, same thing, right? NJ intraday, right? This is, this is what's maintaining intraday, right? Uh, this was that push up. Um, what, what really ticked me off was this. So I wanted us to come lower, right? What I wanted us to do was I wanted us to, I wanted us to come into this reaccumulation right here, right? And I know I've talked about like, people ask me like, when do you go off the 50? When do you go off the 80? So just remember like, if we're correct, in the candle that we choose. So if we pushed, if we chose this candle right here, if we're correct in the candle, then we know that 100% of the time price is going to come into the open of the candle. Can't tell you how many times it'll come into the 50 or how many times it'll come into the 80, but we can definitely say that it'll come into the open, right? So this is essentially the open of the move, right? Right here. And price this past week, price 
comes smack dab right into the open of that candle, right? So out of this type two schematic right here, out of this type two schematic, we come right into the open of that reaccumulation. And then from there, that causes the boof, right? So I was originally looking for entries out of these two areas, okay? But we've since reaccumulated, right? We have another reaccumulation that occurs right here, all right? Um, so kind of going with the idea of where I want to play out of, the, the key areas that I want to see are going to be, and you can, I don't know if you could see it right now. Here's a type one schematic right here. Climax test, test in B spring. This was the mitigation. So I'm guessing I missed an entry on it this morning. What time is this at? Oh, this was last night, Asian session. Entry came in just before London. So yeah, there's your schematic. There's your schematic. So where'd she come? Did she come into three minute or four minute? Three minute, oh, six minute maybe? Six minute, five minute, seven. I don't know what looks better, the six or the seven, we'll see. It would have, oh, I would have lost my mind. It would have missed the 50%. Uh, let's see, so six minute was actually cleaner. So yeah, this, oh wow, I would have lost my mind. I would have lost my mind. Listen, I'm pretty good with psychology and stuff, but stuff like this, when you miss when you miss the entry by pipettes, that would have uh, that would have killed me. Did it do it on? Uh, let's see. Did it do it on here? Or is it just a wand of being stupid? Nope, did it on there too. Yeah. Um, so anyway, yeah, there was a schematic in here. This for me is the mitigation of it. Um, and then when we look at it, so schematic accumulation, distribution, uh, mitigation of that accumulation. And then what do we get? We get a reaccumulation that confirms this break. So what I want to play out of into is I want to see one of two things. Um, I want to see if we can get, if we can get into this price action right here. Right. So I'm going to actually move my alert here. And what I'll be looking for is I'll be looking for a, I'll be looking for an accumulation out of here. All right. This is, this is ultimately the lower time frame reaccumulation that causes this break right here. Right. Causes that break. Not only that, um, but it makes a new order flow break here. All right. So this is going to be the, the primary area I'm going to be really targeting. I want to see if we can get back down into this area, look for an accumulation, take this bad boy up. Yeah. Yeah. So NJ, like I said, NJ, GJ, EJ, Chef JPY are the four JPY crosses I'm looking for buys on. Um, before I do indices, I'll quickly do UCAD. So UCAD, man, I've been waiting for this for a very long time. Um, I mean, what are we at, right? I mean, we could see that we're still bearish on the intraday. Uh, I've been waiting since this high right here. I've been waiting now 62 days. I'll continue to wait a little bit longer. Um, now, I potentially will look for a buy up into this area. Uh, and the only reason I'm going to be looking for the buy is just because of how clean this schematic is down here. Um, this is the reaccumulation right here. This one right here is what caused this next impulsive move. So for me, I want a schematic. If I get a type one schematic in here, I will play this up. Uh, but this is the only area I'm going to be looking at right in here, this, this push. And specifically, it's going to be uh, one, two, three. So maybe the four hour. Yeah, it's going to be this four hour candle. So we trade into this four hour candle. I get a schematic. Yeah, game on. That's where I'm going to be looking. So like right in there. All right. Um, and the only reason I'll be looking for the buy is just because we, we need to trade into this area right here, right? Um, so what I'm going to be, you know, ideally, I mean, we're looking at a 425 pip move. So that's something that I definitely want to look at, um, actually. What are we talking pip wise? 
nine pips to the 80 percent so yeah yeah i i i would like to look for it now we're like 200 pips away from this anyway so yeah 140 pips away so this is maybe something tomorrow maybe something the next day that i'll be looking at but on ucad i'm definitely i'm looking for long long-term cells um you know this is the area you know, specifically that 80% of the six minute, which is also the 15 second candle that I had marked up back in April. <laughs> that's how long it's been. Um, but that's, that's where I'm going to be looking for my sell. I will look for the buy out of here though. Okay. Uh, going on like indices, us 30, listen, good luck with this, man. Um, I, I really like, this is, this is the buy area that I was looking at right in here. Cause this is the reaccumulation that started the next leg, right? All of this is just noise. It's, it's ultimately just noise. Um, you know, I was potentially looking for a distro that was happening in here. I guess I just never got the alert. So we never, I guess, distributed. Yeah. We never got the alert. So I wanted, I wanted this low to get taken. And yeah, no, no, she just fell apart. So this is, this is junk. This is garbage. Um, there's really nothing else to be said on this. Like this price action is just horrible. Um, there is, yeah, there's, there's not much that I can even say on this. Uh, we're, we're just side, all of this is just noise. Um, looking at it from like the 30 minute we had, Here's your distribution, right? Here's your distribution. This is your terminal shakeout, okay? We broke out of the trading range, created that structure break. From there, um, I did have an alert here and I wanted us to get up in there. We just never got up in there. From, from that point here, we distributed and, and made a new low, right? So the only logical thing that I would be looking at is I wanna see us get, you know, obviously into higher pricing, to see if I could see a distribution, um, you know, but we can't. And, and I know for like people that just trade smart money, you guys are looking at these as equal highs, right? As equal highs that are holding liquidity. Well, if we trade above that, we've broken structure, right? So if we take out this right here, we've broken structure. And I would not expect price to distribute out of here to then make a new low. You're not going to break you know, um, you're not going to break intraday structure and then break intraday structure on the next leg again. You know, that's something that I have yet to really see. So if we're going to distribute, we, we're going to do it out of this area here. And it's, you know, honestly, to where I would be looking, last point of supply would be like in here. We're 40, uh, we're 400 points, 400 points away. So, I mean, that's something that's doable. Um Yeah, for me, this is the area I'd be looking right in here. Um, yeah, that's 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 ultimately the area I'd be looking. Um, this is the last point of supply. Yeah, so I mean, US thirty though, like there's there's not much. I mean, I was, I don't know what I was doing in here. I was looking for a buy. You know, that's what I was doing. I was, I was seeing where the heck the buy came into. Oh, geez, come on. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, now I remember. Now I remember. Okay. Yeah. I don't have the, you can't go lower, but there was like a one minute schematic in there that this is what this tapped into. Um, but yeah, for me, for us 30, listen, there's, there's no trades in my future on us 30. Um, I was looking, I was looking at SPX um, to see if we were going to get a potential distribution out of here. Right. Um, but there's just a lot of, there's a lot going on. Right. So you have, this distribution that is now a reaccumulation, right? Because we traded, we traded above this high right here, okay? Um, and then you had this 
distribution that was invalidated that turned into a reaccumulation. And now we have this as a distribution right here that I would probably, if I was a betting man, I would say we're going to trade above it, right? We're going to get this right here. So for me, if this does do something like this, right? If we get if we get this pop up here, I'd be looking for that. And what I would be looking at is find confluence in this move right here, right? This is the play that I want to find. You know, I don't know what candle that's going to be. Um, damn, I don't even know. Let's see. What's the daily? Well, shoot, that was pretty damn easy. The daily. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, that's that's your candle right there. That's your candle. Um, I mean, the stop loss is going to be massive, though. So there's there's no entry, but ultimately, I'd be looking at these two price points. Right, this is what I'd be looking at, these two price points. You know, this is the move on the daily that I like. Uh, and then just just look at what what's what's going on in the 50% of that. This is your reaccumulation. Right. This is the reaccumulation. And down in the 80%. Uh, I don't know if we have a schematic down there. Let me see. Yeah, nothing, nothing clean. This is all like Asian price action. Um, yeah, so I mean, that's that's ultimately the two areas I'd be looking at. I'd I'd be looking for a a schematic to be played, you know, definitely out of this area right here, or out of this lower area right here. But we we would have to confirm the reaccumulation, right? We confirm the reaccumulation, and then yeah, that's that's something that I would play. Um, yeah. And then NAS, listen, NASDAQ made all time highs today. So there's not, there's not much to say with NASDAQ, you know, uh, again, like this distribution didn't do anything. So this bad boy is a reaccumulation, you know, we got a reaccumulation that's made all time highs, right? We've made all time highs and your guess is as good as mine. You know, um, what I would have, uh, I definitely, I guess it did come into this area right here. It came into the slick shot. But yeah, there's, there's, unless I'm not buying, I can't buy at all time highs, you know? Um, and we've, we've got a ways to go before we get into, you know, cause at this point, this is what's maintaining intraday right here, right? That's the intraday structure point. So for me, NASDAQ is, NASDAQ's just doing NASDAQ stuff, man. It's, uh, yeah, we're just bullish, 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 you know? Um, yeah, I really kick myself for closing out of that buy wherever, or I guess in here. I'm really, yeah, I really kick myself on that. But that's that's pretty much, that's everything I'm looking at. That's everything I've got. You know, um, like I said, I'm looking at these three yen crosses and I'm looking uh, minus yen. I'm looking at everything on here uh, and actually minus uh, minus this thing this thing's going on a secondary list. So there we go. Um, but that's pretty much everything I'm looking at. You know, I don't know if anybody else has anything else they've got they're looking at, um, you know, but I really, I'm bullish on the pound pairs. I'm bullish on JPY crosses. I'm really not touching any dollar crosses because um, I, I just don't, there's for right now, the dollar index to me um, so we can kind of see, I wanted to see if this was going to be a failed accumulation. The accumulation has actually played out, but until we take out this high, right. Until we take out that high, uh, I'm not going to be bullish on the dollar. So, and you know, in reality, like this, this thing could just collapse on itself right here, you know? So we're kind of like in the middle. And until we either break above this high or invalidate, and I actually have, 
There we go. I'll throw that out there like that. I actually have my alert there. If, if we invalidate that, then yeah, dollar, you know, dollar would be bearish. So, you know, we'll see. I'm kind of, I'm kind of hoping, um, you know, you could see this, this distribution actually turned into a reaccumulation. There we go. There we go. So much like on, on uh, UCAD, you know, I, I'd be expecting price to come in here, um, you know, and then make a new leg up, right? Um, the one thing that I do like about dollar index, this price action up here did invalidate demand, right? So we had this reaccumulation that got invalidated and we had this reaccumulation that invalidated, you know, cause this ends up trading below that price point. So we could come up here and, and have a, a distribution that just makes this push down or we can invalidate it, you know, and ultimately if we invalidate it, we'd be looking for DXY to really get a, a move going. But to be honest, I have no idea how that's even fundamentally possible. Not with the, not with the shenanigans that, that were the policies that we're doing in the U S right now, according to spending and lending and interest rates and, you know, I've been, I, I really dove into, uh, to Jay Powell's speech, uh, to Congress today. And I, I, I can't tell you, I can't tell you what the heck, why the dollar is rallying. I couldn't. So we'll see, we'll see how it plays out. Um, but other than that, no one else has anything else. Um, no other questions or anything. I'm going to call it a night. I'm going to, uh, yeah, you got it, man. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna be up early tomorrow. I'm I'm gonna set my alarm and uh, see if I can't snag a uh, a nice little trade in the morning, especially on these yen crosses, man. Yen crosses is where I'm looking again on these uh, on these common ones. So good stuff, good stuff. You know, uh, like I said, you know, back testing is is the gem. You know, that's that's honestly once uh, once you really devote that time to back testing, and then what do you do with those back tests? You want to journal them, you know. Have a separate journal. That's what I did. Have a separate journal for every back test and input that data. Win or loss, right? Win or loss, you want to put that information in. Um, you know, because that's, you know, I mean, I, I don't know who's taught you how to back test and stuff like that. But if you're not, if you're not tracking the data from your back test, you're you're only getting, you know, like half of the information. Um, you know, and you don't want to get half the information. So I would, um, you know, I would definitely keep that in the back of your head, you know, just kind of look at it and go from there. Uh, cool, cool. What's a good time to start trading in the morning? Uh, so I typically, you know, I know you guys will laugh when I say this, but I, I like to try to get up at like 5 a.m., but that very seldom happens anymore. But between, I, I call it the London crossover, between 5 a.m. and like Frankfurt close, which is like 10 a.m. Eastern. So that five hour window is where I typically get a really, really good amount of my trades in. So can I go over cause and effect? Uh, yeah, yeah. Just always ask yourself, what did that price action do, right? So, you know, a, a good example would be this, right? Like DXY, this accumulation here, right? What has it done yet? Has it, has it broken structure? Um, and it's broken lower time frame structure. That's it. Hasn't broken intraday, right? We haven't broken intraday structure. Um, so this at this point, this isn't isn't anything, you know. So you always want to ask yourself, all right, you have a distribution. Has that distribution caused any breaks? You know, um, and same thing on the accumulation side. You want to know, okay, so you know, great example coming out of here, right? This was the cause of this leg, right? So we know that this accumulation down here and this reaccumulation down here caused this break of structure, right? So these are these are big focal points. So that's why, like when we started to see this accumulation here, um, you know, I had you know this is actually I think when we were looking for UCAD buys, um, you know. But again, this accumulation, what did it do? Nothing. It couldn't break structure. So cause and effect. You know, you're just starting to see failed accumulations. Uh, so always ask yourself, like, you know, again, this is, you know, do it, do however you want to do it. Uh, this is something I used to do in my early days of, of trading, right? Minus the order flow. 
Um, I always ask myself, where in structure am I? You know, what am I on the on the lower time frame, on the intraday, and on the higher time frame? What is the structure? Uh, and then identify my supply and demand. You know, easy easy to find to find supply and demand. Find your schematics. Find your distros. Find your reaccumulations. Find your redistros. Find your distributions. You know, and then look to see what do they do. Your distribution did it do anything. If it didn't do anything, don't even care about it because that that supply point tells you that sellers weren't able to do anything. Um, and then of course, you know, once you have all these lined up, that's where you start to formulate your, your trading plan, you know, like your, your idea of what, okay, you know, I'm going to be looking for, you know, on GJ, I'm looking for buys. Why? Cause we're bullish, higher time frame, bullish intraday, bearish, lower time frame. but now we are bullish on the order flow side, supply and demand, you know, intraday, we tapped into a very, very potent, uh, demand point. And we're starting to see signs of accumulation and reaccumulation, you know, that's breaking order flow. And, you know, and we, we haven't had the chance to break the lower time frame structure yet. So putting all of that together kind of gives you the game plan of the analysis that you want to see. And then you just pull the trigger on the trades that you want to take. So what does 457? That, that's so in, in number of, um, of, of precedent, order of precedent, right? So number one for me is always structure. That is the be all end all. Number two is supply and demand, understanding where su uh, sellers and buyers are sitting. Number three is cause and effect. What have those buyers and sellers been able to achieve? You know, um, number like 15 would be like the title changes. You know, uh, number 35 is like the moon phases. Um, you know, number 123 would be like uh, what LeBron James thinks, you know, um, number like 321 would be um, I take a 1953 uh, quarter and I flip it. And if it's heads, I buy. And if it's tails, I sell. Right. Um, you know, number like 421, I would say would be like um, man, I don't know. I, I got to come up with like 457 of these things, I think, you know, but yeah, so I put four, 457 would be order flow for me. So yeah, yeah, that's, that's kind of how that's, that's what all that means. So, but, uh, yeah, good stuff guys. Well, listen, thanks for hopping on. I'm, uh, hopefully, you know, hopefully you get some, 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 uh, some little nuggets out of it. All right. Um, I'll, uh, I'll definitely drop some of my charts in the, uh, in the discord, you know, as soon as, as soon as I get some confirmations and stuff, um, it is summertime. So I will say this, right. It is the summertime and I've been trading now for three summers and I can tell you that the summertime does really slow down. Right. Um, and it makes sense. You know, a lot of the traders kind of go on vacation. There's a lot less liquidity in the market. Um, you know, so just take that with a grain of salt. All right. It's winter here, bro. Listen, you're, you're on the bottom side of the world, bro. You know, you're at the bottom side of the world. So, all right, Sango, man, have a good one. I'll see you guys in the morning um, and uh, have a good one.